Welcome to the body imaging cases. This lady presented with episodes of erythema nodosum of her lower limbs. Chest x-rays were done searching for features of sarcoidosis or tuberculosis. And these are two of the diseases which may present with erythema nodosum. And in 2019, she started to have left arm pain and shoulder pain. And in 2020, she had a six month history of intermittent chest pain and dry cough without fever. The latest chest x-rays show peripheral consolidation of the left lower lobe and elevation of the left hemidiaphragm. Consolidation of the lung has several causes, and at the top of this is infection. However, the absence of fever in the present case and the significant volume loss of the left lower lobe are not quite matching with the assumption of pneumonia. And an additional subtle finding will take us to a more probable scenario. There is a striking narrowing of the pulmonary artery of the left lower lobe compared to the right. This suggests pulmonary infarction and not infection as the cause of consolidation. Going back in time, we notice that the narrowing of the pulmonary artery of the left lower lobe is not new and that it has been there even before the onset of the chest pain before the onset of the consolidation and before the onset of the elevation of the left hemidiaphragm. This suggests that we are dealing with a long-standing primary arterial disease that has involved the left inferior pulmonary artery. And going back more and more in time, we notice how this narrowing of the artery has been gradually developing since 2015 at the time the patient had her episodes of erythema nodosum. This is a comparison between a normal chest X-ray and the present case. See how is the normal appearance of the inferior left pulmonary artery with the corresponding vein medial to it. The arterial disease is well demonstrated on the contrast enhanced CT here. It shows that the disease is not limited to the left pulmonary artery, but also the thoracic aorta and its major branches with a pattern of involvement typical of Takayasu's arteritis. There is concentric wall thickening of post common carotid arteries. and arterial collaterals around the left subclavian artery, which is entirely occluded at its origin. There are lymph nodes only on the left side of the mediastinum, suggesting that the arterial disease is inflammatory more than anything else. And there is concentric thickening of the wall of the descending thoracic aorta. A good tip here is to verify the thickening of the aorta at the right side as it abuts the mediastinal fat and not at the left side where an overlying pleural or pulmonary disease may create a false impression of wall thickening. Finally, the most important finding, in fact, is the wall thickening and the, the tapering of the lumen of the left pulmonary artery ending by its occlusion. This uh, multiplanar reconstruction or thin maximum intensity projection may be a good method to look at pulmonary vessels. It shows here the pulmonary artery occlusion and the peripheral lung infarctions.
this is also uh, well seen on the coronal orientation. And here you see also the left subclavian artery occlusion. And the volume rendering techniques show very impressive images of the arterial occlusion in the present case. Now we get the skin more transparent, the bones more transparent, and we can see details of the heart and the major vessels of the thorax. Notice that we are encoding the pulmonary artery in blue and the pulmonary veins in red, the opposite of what we are accustomed to in the systemic circulation. In accordance with the fact that the pulmonary artery carries unoxygenated blood while the pulmonary veins carry the oxygenated blood, the aorta is and its mere branches are encoded in light red. With more rotation, we see the occlusion of the left subclavian artery. We notice also how the uh, right side of the thorax shows uh, normal pulmonary artery and pulmonary uh, vein branching. This is the occlusion of the left subclavian artery at its origin. And it is quite obvious on looking from the back that the pulmonary artery and its branches on the left lower lobe, which are now on your left hand side, of course, we are looking from the back, uh, they are occluded. Now we see where it stops. This is the tapering of the inferior pulmonary artery immediately after giving off the quite smaller uh, left upper lobe pulmonary artery. Color Doppler ultrasonography of the left arm has been done and it shows here two important features. The peak systolic velocity of the brachial artery is 43 centimeter per second. Normally, it should be between 80 and 120 centimeters per second. The, and the pattern of the spectrum uh, in, is no longer the triphasic pattern as it should be in the brachial artery. It is important uh, in this case to include the other arm in the color Doppler examination for comparison. Analogous, in fact, to, to the very uh, important and very simple clinical test in Takayasu's arthritis, which is measuring the blood pressure in both arms and noticing the difference on the diseased side. So the diagnosis in this case is Takayasu's arthritis, causing occlusion of the left pulmonary artery and the left subclavian artery. The learning points are Takayasu's arthritis may initially present with erythema nodosum. Though rare, Takayasu arthritis may affect the pulmonary artery. It is important to measure the blood pressure in the two arms, particularly when the blood pressure is too low on a single arm measurement. And uh, the most important uh, radiological learning point here is to identify the inferior pulmonary artery on the chest X-ray, as it may be uh, the clue to the diagnosis in cases such as the present case.